My wife and I just got back from a, a day or so gone, and when we got back, she saw a big track right there. Looked to me like to be a dog, a big dog, big footprint, by the gate that goes in our front yard where we the dog where we put the dog when we're gone and uh, so that track has got us a little concerned what it means is that something probably crawled under our gate up there uh, that's about the only way in to the property and uh, it's happened before we've had stray dogs crawl under the fence uh, I'll take you up there a minute and show you a little bit better shot but that's what we believe or what I believe probably happened we found one track there and then um, a track back uh, behind me now that's not all that worrying except you know I've got chickens and if it's a stray dog and it starts because I do let the chickens out from time to time that can be a problem but when we got home I opened the gate and uh, let the dog out into this uh, to the main yard. And then that night I noticed a fresh pile of goodies right in front of our front door. Uh, nearly stepped in it barefooted. That would have, that would have got a dog shot probably. Anyway, uh, so it was still on the properties or seemingly so the, the day that we got home, after we got home. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is to prevent all this happening, and the reason I'm saying this is to go up on the front gate. I'll show you what's going on up there, and I'm going to put uh, a hot wire underneath the gate. I believe in hot wires. If you've watched me for any length of time at all, you know I do love a hot wire. So I'm going to put one under that gate and, um, and keep animals from coming on our property. I showed you um, a few months ago a, so a gift that was given to me, a box of fence chargers. Uh, and this is one of them. It is a 12 volt fence charger. And um, I'm gonna be using it for this project. The reason I'm using uh, 12 volt is because I have a battery sitting up here for my gate opener. So that works out real well. I'll use the same battery for the gate opener. Obviously, you've noticed that there's a lot of road noise. It's four in the afternoon, a lot of people going home, and uh, a lot of people live down past me, so they're going past my house, and we will get some road noise. I will try to video in between the cars. Has a little uh, tab here on the back. I'm just gonna hang it from this fence with uh, just a piece of wire, cut it off, just hang it up like that on the fence. So what I've done is on the bottom of this fence, uh, in about four places across there, I've screwed a, a, um, a little insulator up into the fence and um, to, hold it, to hold it in place and to hold the wire about three or four inches, or two or three inches off the bottom of the fence and about six inches off the bottom uh, off the ground. So if, uh, if an animal tries to scoot up under there, there's just no right way around it. They're going to get bit. So I've got this attached to the fence right there. And let's get this attached to the electric fence. And I'm using an insulated wire for my jumper. The wire going from the fence charger to the little tag end I've got here on that fence will be a, um, a piece of insulated wire. You can touch this when the fence is hot and it won't hurt you. That will hurt you but that won't insulate it. So I've got it tied with the jumper wire to the fence. This is the hot side on the fence charger. I need to ground the fence charger and all I will do is, will be to ground it to this fence right here because this fence is touching about 50 T-posts and those T-posts are in the ground providing a great ground for this. Okay, so I've got the ground wire tied off onto the fence right here. That's all I need for a ground, good ground. And then this going to the hot wire. The only uh, the only problem that could occur is as this moves back and forth. Of course, the gate that right there will come over here. Will move back and forth here. 
and as you know if you have ever wiggled on a wire they can break once when they wiggle quite a bit they can break so I'm going to kind of open open and close the gate and see if there's if there's any problem with that right there wiggling I don't think it's gonna be a problem here but right there there could be a problem with it with it wiggling enough to break the wire in time so let me let me open and close the gate and see what kind of freedom we have in this jump wire It really didn't change much. Uh, the wire is pretty much like it was. Like I say, it came over to about right here and it moved back here. Really not bad. So I think that's gonna work without there being a, uh, a bad problem um, with this wire right here. So let me turn it on and see if it works. So let's turn it on, check the voltage. Hear it clicking. There's my tester. 6,000 volts. 6.2. That's 6.3, 6.5 thousand volts. It's pretty hot. Not as hot as my other fence chargers, but it's pretty hot. Now that says 10,000 volts, if I'm reading that right. And it is not 10,000 volts, but 6,000 volts would give you a pretty good shot. So we're going to try this and see if uh, we can keep out any unwanted company from the farmstead. One thing you need to do, if you do something like this, to make sure you put a warning on there and maybe put an arrow. I'm going to put an arrow pointing down to the electric fence so you can warn anybody that may uh, UPS, something like that, that uh, might be putting a package up under your fence you may want to slide it under your fence you do not want them to get shocked there could be uh, some liability there so make sure you put a warning that covers your butt pretty much and uh, anyway I can hear it clicking we got 6,000 6,500 volts up under here and hopefully it'll keep stray dogs out and it'll keep my dog from getting out he he <laughs> I've had this here in the past he did hit it and how do I know that? Because he wouldn't come, he wouldn't even come halfway down the driveway. He was so dang scared of this thing. It got him and it got him good. And it was my good one. It was about 11,000 volts and it hit him hard. And he, he won't even come near this gate anymore. So if you want to keep a dog in, that's also a great way to do it. How to keep a dog in, how to keep predators out. And this will work like a charm. And I also need to paint my gate. Doggone it. That gate is peeling off. I didn't paint it right the first time, I guess. My red paint's peeling off. The brown is showing up. It's a brown gate, but I painted red. And I should have used uh, something. I don't know, a primer, oil base, or some kind of primer. Some of you folks that know what, 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 that are good painters know that kind of stuff, let me know. Because that is just peeling off. I need to redo it. I don't want to redo it, but one more time. I don't want it peeling off again. But, uh, so what should I paint a farm gate that is painted, powder coated, I'm sure, from the factory? What should I paint it? What, how should I paint it? Prime it with what? Paint it with what? All base, latex, tell me what, because I'm not sure. Anyway, that's keeping predators out. And if you don't put a sign up, you're trying to keep the UPS man out too, because if he if he hits it sliding a package under there, woo, he's not going to like you at all. All right, I think we are gone. As the traffic keeps going by, I should have done this around noon. Because traffic slows down when everybody's eating. But everybody's going home right now. And I don't blame them. I'd want to go home too. All right, we're gone.